I want to talk a little bit about experiment 14.1 because this is one that you've not done anything like so far this year. Experiment 14.1 is a leaf collection. Um, some of you may live in places where you don't really have any leaves available and if that is the situation for you then hang tight for a couple of minutes and we'll discuss that issue in just a little bit as to what you're going to do for this experiment. Um, to collect the leaves, um, they do give you some instructions in your book, but I want to add a little bit to that just so you don't end up um, making a mistake that could make your parents really upset. The best way to dry your leaves is to put them between the pages of an old magazine and then put some heavy books on top of them and then just give them time to dry. If you don't have any old magazines um, and you're going to put them directly into a book, I would highly recommend that you put some scrap paper on either side of the leaves because once in a while the leaves will stain the pages of the book. So please don't put these leaves into your treasured family heirloom Bible. Um, because it, likely you'll have some sort of stains on the pages. So at least put some sort of scrap paper or something down in the pages of the book that you're going to use to dry them in. Now it may depend what type of climate you live in as to whether these pages, whether these leaves are going to dry very well or not. And so you may choose to use the second option, which is if you have wax paper available, you can take the leaves and you can put them between two pieces of wax paper. And again, he gives you some instructions for this in the experiment. I do want to caution you about a couple of things that my own kids have had trouble with when we did it this way. The, you want to make sure, first of all, that you don't touch the wax paper directly to the iron because it makes a mess on your iron. Um, secondly, um, after you iron the leaf into the wax paper and you take the scissors and you go to trim around it to make it look nice, you want to be very careful not to trim too close because if you do that, then you're going to break the seal that you made when you ironed the wax paper shut. And so don't trim it real close. You can still trim it up and make it look nice, but you want to make sure that you don't trim it too close and end up breaking the seal. What we have found is that eventually these leaves will still mold and so if you have the option of drying the leaves, it really truly is a much better option than trying to iron them into wax paper. Now, we get to the problem of what time of year it is when you're ready to study this module. Um, if I look out my window today, the leaves are just starting to come out, but they're certainly um, only just starting and there's not enough leaves on the trees to be able to make any kind of a collection. So if I had a student starting the, this particular module at this time of year, I would say, you know what, we're just going to wait a couple of weeks in order for you to be able to do this leaf collection. You can go ahead and study the rest of the module, but you're just going to have to wait a couple of weeks until the leaves come out on the trees a little bit further and you can actually collect them. If that's not a problem, just send it to me whenever you get it finished. You may have a completely different type of problem. Maybe you live in a high-rise apartment someplace and there aren't any trees around. Or maybe if you went to the park in your city, um, the police would be mad at you for pulling leaves off of the trees and you might get in trouble. Um, maybe there aren't any trees around. Maybe you live in a desert climate where there literally aren't any trees around. Um, if that is the case for you, or maybe there are a few trees, but you certainly don't have 20 of them, which is what the experiment calls for, I've sent you a document that has a lot of pictures in it where you can practice identifying um, the shape, the venation, and the, the different types of categories that you're asked to look for in the experiment. Now, if you have any trees at all, I would much, much prefer that you use actual leaves and not the pictures that I sent you because it's a, it's a much more beneficial experience for you to use real leaves on the trees. Um, you're not going to be able to tell by the placement of the leaves, um, alternate or whether it's world or whether they're opposite. You're not going to be able to see that from the pictures I sent you in almost all of them because I simply couldn't find that, those types of pictures on the internet. Um, to be able to show you those different types of, of placement of the leaves on the branch. So that's something that you can only see if you're actually looking at the tree yourself. So if you can only, maybe you can only find five different types of trees where you live, then use the document that I sent you to print out, or not to print out, but to look for the other 15. In fact, I would highly recommend that you don't print that document because first of all, it will take a lot of color ink. 
And secondly, if you're looking at it directly on your computer screen, you'll be able to enlarge the picture so that you can see it even better um, than you could as far as what its normal size is. I would be asking an awful lot of you to ask you to take pictures of all 20 pages of this and send it to me for grading. So I'm not asking you to do that. What you're gonna find is as you start drying these leaves, um, what you may realize is that when you go a couple of days later to look at it and see if it's ready, you may realize that you wrinkled the leaf up when you put the books on top of it and you didn't realize it. And so what I, what I want you to do is to just pick the five best leaves out of your whole collection, take pictures of those pages and send them to me. So I only want five when you send it to me. I don't want your, I don't want all 20. So just pick the best five. Maybe you had trouble identifying some of them. Um, if you can't identify them at all because you don't have a leaf guide or a tree identification guide in the place where you live, that's okay too. Worry mostly about the shape of the leaf, the venation, and the other types of specific characteristics of each leaf that you're looking at. So send me the best five and we will go from there.